Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Motorola Droid Turbo. Back in November, Verizon brought me out to an event where they introduced us to this device. They told us to take it home with us for a couple of months and then do a review of it. It's now been three months and I haven't done that yet, so let's get started. When I first started using this device, I just sort of assumed that it was like the 2014 Moto X with a few relatively minor improvements. However, the Droid Turbo is actually a pretty impressive device. It comes with the Snapdragon 805 processor, where the Moto X has the 801. It's got three gigs of RAM, where the Moto X has two. 32 or 64 gigs of storage, where the Moto X is 16 or 32, uh, except for the Pure Edition, which has 64 gigs. The camera in this was also improved, coming in at 21 megapixels with an f2.0 aperture on the back, instead of 13 megapixels and an f2.25 on the Moto X. The screens on the two devices are the same size, but the Turbo has Quad HD, where the Moto X is still 1080p. The Turbo also does 4K video at 24 frames per second on the back camera, and a 3900 milliamp hour battery over the 2300 mAh battery in the X, so on paper, the Turbo pretty much blows the 2014 Moto X out of the water. That's what I'm saying. Now to move on to the actual review of the device, unfortunately, I don't have a Moto X on hand to compare it to in reality, but when I compare it to the other devices I use on a daily basis, like the OnePlus One, the Asus Padphone X, and several other devices, the Droid Turbo is pretty well amazing. The Snapdragon 805 in it just chugs along with the best of them. I haven't been able to tax it enough to really slow it down yet. The screen, although it feels a little small in my hand after using the OnePlus for so long, it's bright, it's beautiful, and the ambient notifications, as you can see there, always really, really convenient. The camera does a pretty decent job, even in low light situations, and that's thanks to that 2.0 aperture. And while the video, the mic might not be so great, but the video quality is pretty decent. It's definitely missing any sort of image stabilization, which can be a bit of a bummer, so hold it very, very steady if you want good shots. And as far as the build quality, I have never had a single concern about this device. I haven't thrown it about or anything, but it does feel very solid in the hand. And there is one really unique feature about this one in particular that I've got, and it's the black ballistic nylon back that it's got instead of the traditional polycarbonate. There were other versions that were metallic red and metallic black. I didn't get to spend much time with hands on those, but I'm glad that I walked away from the event with the nylon back because I think it makes it a little easier to keep grip on it. And I've actually had more than a few people comment on the look and feel of the device and how much they like that. At first, a lot of people say it's, it's kind of weird to the touch because it kind of is, but I like it a lot. Now moving along, the speakers, well, speaker, I say that because there's only one speaker. It is front facing though, which is very nice and it can put out a pretty decent amount of sound that doesn't sound bad at all, but dual front facing would of course be better. You know, you've got the space for it and everything. It would be nice. The device does also come with some interesting smart features like reacting to you reaching for it. So the ambient notifications will come on when you put your hand out and you can wave to silence it if it's buzzing or, or a phone call's coming in or something like that. It's also got a couple of smart modes like the drive mode and the sleep mode. It can detect how fast you're moving or if it's a certain time of day or night, it will set itself to sleep mode. That I'm definitely appreciative of. And it's also got some voice controls. So you can program it for things like your own command phrase. You can say, okay droid turbo and there it picked up there and now it'll say things like what's the weather or take a photo and then it'll try to recognize what you're saying i didn't end up using that feature very much but i can see it being quite useful i tend to just go to my watch and say okay google blah 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 and have it do stuff and the one thing i wanted to make sure to mention and mention last is battery life this has a 3900 milliamp hour battery in it, which is pretty much unheard of in smartphones. When I was talking to the guy from Motorola, he basically said that with this device, they don't even talk about it in terms of milliamp hours. They talk about it in days. They claim this phone is capable of two full days of battery life under regular usage. In my day-to-day -day usage, I definitely didn't have any problem going at least a day and a half under pretty heavy usage, lots of gaming and things like that. So with regular use, I could easily see it reaching two full days. That said, the review unit I'm using came with a turbocharger, which can add up to eight hours of mixed usage battery life in just 15 minutes of charging. That said, that turbocharger doesn't actually perform in turbo mode unless the device is at less than 20% battery life. But at that point, it's amazingly fast at charging. I do kind of wish the turbocharger was a fast charger all the time, but since the battery is as large as it is, that's really not all that necessary. With some other devices like the Oppo Find 7, it comes with a turbocharger as well, or I think it's VOOC that they call it, but it actually needs that because its battery isn't all that great. 
Anyway, to wrap things up, this device has been excellent all around. Great battery life, amazing performance, and just a pretty decent camera wrapped up in a version of Android that's pretty well close to stock, but with some useful tweaks on top of it, like the ambient notifications, the voice controls, and the ability to shake the camera to turn on the camera. That's always very, very useful. So if you're a Verizon customer and you're looking for an excellent quality device, try and get your hands on the Droid Turbo just to see if it's something you'd be interested in. Anyway, that's gonna be about all from me for today. Remember, if you like this video, please do leave me a like down below the video. I definitely appreciate it. Subscribe to receive all of my future videos as soon as they become available. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.